Hello, everyone. Today we are going to be joined by some special friends. We've got Jenny Kramanaka from Zebra Technologies, Lucas Fitzgerald from Ingram Micro, I'm Dan Zirko, Vice President of Sales at TRG, and Trish Petrosian with Ingram Micro. We're going to talk about what we're seeing in trends from a solutions and a hardware perspective in the field operations arena, and as it spills over into all of our solutions. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to kick it off first, and Jenny, I want to go to you, you first, and I, from the, we're all dealing with all of the issues that we see in supply chain and the global impact that we're seeing in our field operations solutions. And I'd like to get your perspective on what Zebra sees from a solutions perspective, and it's in the operations world today, especially as we get outside of the four walls, mm -hmm. and then talk about what Zebra's doing to address some of the challenges that we're facing. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, you're right, everybody's had a supply chain effect, whether you're trying to buy a car, or you're trying to buy electronics or laptops, so we're all seeing it, we're all feeling it from a manufacturer's perspective. Some of the changes we've seen really is around that software side of things, where people are, um, putting more software on less devices, right? They're, they're utilizing their devices more, especially outside the four walls when they're using cellular data to, to pull their software and their needs through at either you know direct store delivery or whatever they're doing. So we're seeing a lot of change in that space, which is where Zebra's investing as well. And then from a, from a distributor's perspective, what are you guys seeing? You know, supply chain challenges aren't on, the only thing that we are facing lately. I mean, we've been facing, um, we're hearing more about material shortages, labor fluctuations, you know, everything from, you know, getting the product in-house. Um, there's many delays across the board, and what we're really trying to do is focus on uh, predictable analysis and, and looking at our inventory, looking at different things that our partners are buying today and trying to foreshadow or foresee like what is going to happen next. So really taking a look at supply and demand. And if something is, um, you know, something is a constrained product, we're really trying to foresee what our partners would be buying in the future or what that predictable analysis is for that, that solution and trying to almost over purchase or invest in that product as well as um, making sure that we do get it hopefully in time. That You hit the nail on the head. Um, we're seeing the, some of the countries that are doing the manufacturing now have just opened up maybe a month, month and a half ago, two months ago. Um, we're seeing delays in you know the ships coming in and us being able to take in the freight on the state side uh, with due to lack of labor and then even ground transportation and, and shipping uh, with the trucks. We're seeing shortages in that area too. So it's just, it's from front, you know, from beginning to end, we're just seeing delays across the board. Anything with a chip or glass in it, we're seeing huge delays. From your perspective, has the pandemic changed uh, where our focus needs to be? And Absolutely. Um, we're seeing a lot of changes in the way, not only the, the in-store experiences, but how the, in the stores operate. So a lot of these chain stores that used to have separate warehouses are now storing at the store site so that when you're ordering online they can ship it out faster um, and it gets to the customer faster we're also seeing a big shift in um, you know we talk about user experience hands-free checkout or using some kind of a rfid technology to do um, i know amazon's toying with it right now where some of the stores where you go in you load it in the cart and as you're loading it in the cart it's being recorded and then all of a sudden you just tap your cart on the device and you're out the door so we're seeing a lot of those things um, happen drastically, and I feel like COVID's been the the catapult to push things forward. I feel like it was all there, and it was it was in the ready for so long, and then when COVID hit, it was just what the industry needed to move forward. I would agree with what you said. I think that you know how many new terms have we learned over the last two years? Bopus and all the thing, you know, curbside and yeah. the things that we toyed with, and that the big retailers would go. You know, maybe do a little bit of piloting or those types of things. Now it's it's mainstream. And I just read an article last week that was all about how our life, you know, after COVID, is not really going to change. We now have a new taste of what we like. We like I like my groceries being delivered by somebody else. You know, I like to be able to shop on my phone and have it at my doorstep two hours later. So uh, it's it's a new world. And I think that you're right. It was like it was the catapult into it was the pandemic, but. Um, but labor shortages, to echo what you said, labor shortages are also really difficult right now in the staging of labor. So whereas you might have had 50 people coming into manufacture at one time, now we have, you know, 20, 20, 20, and that changes the, 
the game as well. It's, it's a little bit harder to manage. Um, even though you can get some more productivity out of it, it's harder to manage. And I would agree with both of you as well. I agree with them. You know, um, pre-COVID, <laughs> pre, pre pre-COVID, you know, I would go to the grocery store every week. I would pick out my own groceries. During COVID, you know, you, you got to use some of those tools. So the do, uh, store delivery or buy online, pick up, you know, Target, like I mentioned earlier, does make it, you know, pretty easy to do. And, you know, you get two day free shipping too with Target. Like it's like an Amazon for me. And personally, it's not that I don't wanna go pick out and touch and feel everything in the store. I just find it to be easier and more convenient for me to do the delivery. They deliver wine. I know. They deliver, like, so, Isn't that awesome? Yeah, I mean, I know what I like. So I know what I, I like. Bananas, I need wine. <laughs> From a, a manufacturer's perspective and a, and a distributor's perspective, are we seeing a labor shift? So we used to be all of our labor and, and correspondingly our solutions. So we used to see all of our labor focused on in, in manufacturing and distribution. Are we seeing a labor shift to reverse logistics and last, and last mile? Mm -hmm. So are the solutions, are, are we having to turn our solution set dramatically to support that now? Um, let me take a stab real quick. So we're seeing a definite labor shortage or labor change. I mean, we're all obviously seeing a labor shortage. Any 15, 16 year old can make 20 bucks at McDonald's an hour right now. It's nuts. But, um, but to see the shift is, you know, it, it is truly in that last mile, as you said, it's, it's, that you brought up the trucks like how many how many times have you driven down the road and you're just like there's so many trucks on the road these days and yeah. it's not enough for how much yeah so uh definite change in how we are our what our labor looks like whether it's in our supplies manufacturing plants or it's in our kitting plants or it's you know and it does it, whether it's in malaysia or mexico or even the united states it's all uh it's all relative to where we are today my own, my own experience, right? If I'm gonna order a pair of shoes online, then I'll order two or three sizes because I don't know which pair is gonna fit. You know, so depending on which one, so that means I've gotta return two or three pairs. So you go back to the UPS store, the Amazon store. And, and so I think we're seeing a shift in that solution set as well. Well, if you order from Amazon and you don't want it, and you just go print your label, you can drop it off at any number of places to ship back, or you can go to stores and they give you an instant credit right there. So Kohl's has the Amazon instant credit. So they've just made it incredibly easy to order three pair of shoes, find the right ones, and then deliver the other ones you don't need. Because now we have inspections, we have all those things when the product's flowing back into us because we weren't built from a solutions perspective. So is that something that you guys are seeing a bigger demand on, on the technology? Yeah, I think to her point, I think Amazon created that need for everybody else to keep up and, on the return side. Just they set the precedent and mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people saying, well, we have to do it because they're doing it. And um, like you said, it's, it's taking those returns in and really finding a process to streamline everything. What are you seeing from customers from that perspective? I am seeing from what we see from a distributor standpoint, it's a lot different than maybe from what you see, Jenny, but you know, ultimately from what I've read and what's out there today, it seems like most partners, most customers, what they really need is something to easily deploy um, in their workforce, something that's easy for each employee to understand, each employee to learn, especially during these labor shortages and fluctuations that we're seeing. Yeah, that's a great point. I think Zebra has gone an extra step with Lifeguard so we created uh, you know, a software a service solution for those extended, to extend the life of the actual product. And that's been very successful in the last couple of years with the pandemic because that's exactly what people are needing to do. They're like, we need another 18 months out of this or another year. And so Lifeguard has helped us with that. Now that was a solution prior to, but it actually just kind of you know, got wrapped up really, really well over the last two years to extend that service and the product. So is there, is there a drive at Zebra or to start developing software that makes it you know, easier to train, easier to learn, easier to, to do on-the-job training? Uh, are you seeing a demand for that? 
We are, you know, I'm not certain that we're focused on the actual training elements because if you think about all the different end users and all their different training requirements, I think that's a bit bold and, and uh, probably a little too big a scope. But we are focused on the software side of things. A lot of our acquisitions have been based around that software, a lot of niche, you know, different areas that kind of tell a story and tie it all together. And so what Trish said about that ease of use is absolutely a focus um, and how to get there. And it's it's really, you know, you're looking at what's happening in our workforce and our workforce is getting younger and younger and younger while I'm getting older and older and older. And they know innately what to do with a handheld device. They, they understand it a whole lot better than we probably ever will. And so um, ease of use is really great, but we also have people that have grown up with nothing but technology coming into the workforce. So it's a little bit easier there too. Where do you think solutions are gonna focus in the next three to five years? I, what I've seen, and in, in going back to retail, I've seen automation, just um, automating the processes of, you know, instead of having someone scan it, have the people scan it themselves, the, the customers scan it themselves, but also, you know, where you would normally have an inventory manager, right, tracking purchases and tracking things, or even managing it on some type of software, now you're, you're seeing edge computing devices coming in and tying the front of the house point of sale with the back of the house inventory, and even you know, um, so at the point of sale, it's registering the sale and automatically checking inventory and placing the orders with the manufacturers. And um, you'll even see now where they're incorporating that flex edge computing with their digital signage. So as they're by, they're running out of one product, you'll see the digital signage automatically change and focus on another product. And it's just one seamless uh, system that just seems to be moving on its own. And the, the more you know about the consumer in that space, then you'll start to see those as they're walking by the peanut butter and they know that I buy peanut butter and they're going to pop up a, you know, on my app, they're going to pop up a Does that scare you? Coupon. No, and you know, <laughs> it does me. Does it? <laughs> oh, I, I don't want them Big to brother. know that. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't want them to know that I like extra crunchy and not smooth. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 don't I like the coupon, so I'm good with it, yeah. <laughs> So customer experience, I think, has taught us all last year that that's what the most important thing is out there. It taught me what is easy to use, what do I want to buy. So to your example, would I like someone doing that for me? I would. If I'm bringing in a size and it's not going to fit, I'd like someone to already go out and get me the new size. Ease of use, ease of doing business. So from your perspective, everything is going to be geared more and more just towards consumer experience, more convenience. I think, yeah, to your point, like right now we're seeing digital signage even with cameras on them that'll, when you're walking by a, an aisle and there's something that, you know, let's say for me and I'm walking through and it shows a, a polo, you know, in my size or, or a sale on polos, it'll register age, uh, gender, um, and, and flash a catered advertisement to that person that's walking by the aisle. Mm -hmm. Let's look at, you know, your, your phone you talk about something and then you open up an app and all of a sudden that advertisement pops up that you were talking about. Um, I'm waiting for the day where that's gonna be integrated to you walking into a store and it's something that you were just talking about is gonna flash in front of you on the, on the screen, almost like a Minority Report if you've ever seen that movie. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna record everything and, and then project it. So, um, But at the end of the day, that's to make sure that they're aiming directly at the customer and giving them exactly what they're looking for and what they're needing. You always focused on rugged mobility, always did for years. Mm -hmm. well, are we getting closer and closer and closer to convergence? Uh, I think we are. I mean, you know, Zebra's seeing, you know, the ultra rugged, rugged and semi rugged space. That's where we play and that's where we're going to continue to play. But then you see consumer products that are trying to get more rugged to kind of get up to our level or our manufacturing, you know, all of our peers level and I, I think that you're going to continue to see that. There is a breaking point there and I, I, that is a pun intended but um, there is a breaking point there that, that won't work. Like there's, a, there's a price point in there. Mm -hmm. You know, We just went um, this weekend one of my friend's daughters broke her iPhone. The, the, the guy said well if you order this one we can get you $1,000 off the phone and I was like how much is the phone if you get $1,000 off right and so there is that consumer spend and then business spend. And I don't think we're gonna see a big crossover between the two. I think we're gonna to get to that line and then it's gonna be, okay, I'm now paying for ruggedness. I now know I get it. Is there a concerted effort to make that or create that awareness that says you can only go so far with a, with a consumer device? Yeah, I don't know that. Uh, I think that's the consumerization um, 
communications that have been out there for a couple of years have proven that. Some of the big customers that have gone to a non-rugged device and then they've completely reordered their new fleet of rugged because it didn't work. So I think it's maybe telling its own story um, in some of the areas. Everything that technology is leaving the manufacturing space or, or the four wall space and now it's just become prevalent everywhere. And it's just, I think we're going to see more and more of that as well. I do. We just had our tires rotated and, and oil changed and everything and they had our device and they were checking the depth of the tread with our device and another tool and it was just the coolest thing. Of course it was a Zebras in the Wild, I haven't posted it yet, but I mean it was just a really cool thing that I was able to say, oh my gosh, that's, that's technology happening before our eyes that wouldn't have been there two years ago. I read something just last this past weekend, I, I'm like you Jenny, I'm reading all the time, um, where on the Apple I th the iPhone 13, they're, they didn't turn it on, but there's a feature in the new iPhone that it'll bypass traditional cellular communications and go to satellite communications. So now, now you start to think about where is the technology headed? Yeah, so what does that forebode for traditional cell phone companies? So if the cell phone manufacturers are now thinking about going to cellular, or excuse me, to satellite, what does that bode for T-Mobile, for Sprint, for Verizon, AT&T? You know, that's, we can start to get a glimpse on where they're headed with technology as we start to see what they're putting out there. Interesting. Yeah, that's gonna be really fascinating. Yeah. I see acquisitions happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, you're, not, you're not going to start into that satellite business now. It's going to be acquiring and partnering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, so they're going to be working for low orbiting satellites. But that's the technology that they've put into the iPhone 13. Wow. Is to communicate with them. That's incredible. I didn't even hear that. That's yeah, it's, that's, pretty scary. that's pretty fascinating. That's why yeah. they're $1,300. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it tells you where Apple's headed, right? It, yeah. What Apple is, so you can now see Apple becoming. A, you know, a phone company in addition to a hardware manufacturer. Mm -hmm. well, I, again, thanks to everybody for joining me today. This was awesome. I really enjoyed it. Really appreciate your perspectives. So it was fun. Thanks again. Hope we get to do it again. And everybody have a great day. Thank you. Thank thanks. you. Thanks. Thank you.